Your old desktop PC finally gave up the ghost and you have a quarterly report due Monday. So you go to your local electronics store, tell a guy in a blue shirt what you're looking for, and after 30 minutes of shrugging off the one to $2,000 gaming PCs and ultra portable laptops, you settle on a reasonably priced desktop PC with specs you don't fully understand, but from a company you've heard of and the promise that it'll handle all of your home office and business work. And a computer like this is a perfectly good solution for all that and will meet the needs of the vast majority of PC users. But what if I told you, you can get a PC that performs better, costs less, uses less power, is quieter, and only takes up a fraction of the space. Can this tiny PC that literally fits in my pocket really be better than a full-size desktop PC? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and this is the B-Link SER5 mini PC. And when I say this tiny little PC is fundamentally a better overall computer than this much bigger and more expensive PC, I'm not really exaggerating. How B-Link accomplishes this is by taking a high-end laptop and stripping away all the expensive extras, the screen, webcam, microphones, keyboard, trackpad, and leaving a fast six core, 12 thread Ryzen CPU, 16 gigabytes of memory, a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD, and Wi-Fi 6E, essentially creating a $400 PC from an $800 to $1,000 laptop which you can pair with full-size peripherals of your choosing, allowing you to customize your setup and better manage your overall budget. Not to mention, when comparing this mini PC to a full-size desktop, the B-Link uses on average 55% less power while meeting or surpassing the performance in the most common home office or small to medium business workloads. I'll summarize those performance comparisons a bit, but first, Let's look at the setup for this mini PC. Now, of course, the really nice thing about a desktop PC versus a laptop, if portability isn't a concern, is once you settle on a PC that meets your performance requirements, you can then tailor the peripherals to your exact needs. So I always recommend you go to your local Best Buy, Office Depot, Micro Center, Media Market, and try out the peripherals. Type on the keyboards, use the mice, sit down in front of the monitors, and pick the ones that you like best. For this setup, I went with about an $800 price point as that's the lower end of the price range for a laptop with the same specs as the mini PC. But instead of a little 13 inch HD 60 hertz display, I got a 32 inch 1440p 144 hertz display. And instead of the little laptop chiclet style keyboard, I got an inexpensive but nice mechanical keyboard and mouse combo. And there was still enough left in the budget for an inexpensive speaker bar and webcam, both of which are still better than the ones you'll find in most laptops. Once I plugged in all the peripherals and powered on the mini PC, the setup was simple. It's just a bone stock Windows 11 install. No proprietary, unnecessary software or bloatware of any kind. I really love that. I just kept the little PC on the desk, but if you're going for a very clean look, you can mount the B-Link to the back of your monitor. It even comes with a short HDMI cable. Use a wireless keyboard and mouse and you have a very clean and simplified setup. Now, because the desktop PC was significantly more expensive, currently selling for nearly $650, the room in the budget was a bit more restrictive. On the bright side, most desktops like this come with a mouse and keyboard. Unfortunately, they're usually pretty cheap and flimsy ones, but it does allow us to get a display, albeit a cheaper 24 inch 1080p 75 Hertz monitor. And we can use the same speaker and webcam to meet the same $800 price point. And since I first reviewed this PC several months ago, I've wiped the SSD and did a clean Windows 10 install, getting rid of all the bloatware that was initially installed on this by HP. Now that the systems are set up, let's take a look at their performance. Starting with raw CPU performance and in the Cinebench R23 test, the eight core 65 watt Ryzen 7 in the HP outpaces the mini PC's six core 25 watt Ryzen 5 by 33%. The HP takes an 8% lead in a Geekbench 5 multi-core test. However, when you look at single core scores, we see the B-Link closes the gap to a statistical tie in Cinebench and takes a 4% lead in Geekbench. Now, it's important to note that the extreme loads of these multi-core tests 
are not at all what either of these computers were designed for. If you're doing work like 3D rendering, advanced video editing, complex code compilation, you should be looking for a computer with a dedicated GPU to allow for hardware acceleration of those tasks. But if you use your computer for what the vast majority of people use their computer for, which are single core bursty workloads like web browsing, video conferencing, productivity work in suites like Microsoft Office, light graphics editing or desktop publishing, then these tests give us an idea of which computer is best for those jobs. Let's narrow in on that. In PC Mark 10, if we test all of those common workloads I just mentioned, the two systems are very close, but the B-Link just pulls ahead by about 2%. If we focus in on productivity tasks in Microsoft Office, the mini PC still pulls ahead by a little over 2%. But if we look at photo editing, a task that I've recently reclassified from content creation to productivity, as many business professionals are using apps like Photoshop right alongside their office software for adding graphics and images to documents and presentations, here the HP does take a 12% lead. This is mostly due to its larger and more powerful integrated GPU. Apps like Photoshop and Lightroom are mostly single core speed dependent. However, there are effects and filters that use the GPU. And if we look at the Geekbench 5 OpenCL graphics test, the HP does take a pretty significant 36% lead. While I'm on the subject of iGPU and because I know my audience, I have to spend a couple of minutes on the gaming performance of these systems, but I do wanna prelude this by saying, neither of these are intended to be gaming PCs. However, it doesn't mean you can't game on them. You just need to be realistic with your expectations when it comes to gaming on the integrated GPU in these Ryzen CPUs, as opposed to a computer with a dedicated graphics card. You're not gonna get really playable frame rates on the latest and greatest AAA titles, but if you're into older or eSport type games, then these can work, but just like the iGPU productivity performance, the bigger, more powerful desktop chip has the advantage here, as we see in a 3D Mark Night Raid benchmark, where the HP takes a significant 41% lead. This was about the same in gameplay. I tried Rocket League in 1080p performance mode, and while it was playable on the B-Link at almost 50 FPS, the HP was able to push over 60 FPS. Same with Fortnite at 1080p performance mode. The B-Link could only achieve about 45 FPS. Unfortunately, the 1% lows were really bad and made gameplay pretty unplayable. While the HP pushed frame rates of 76 FPS, and while the 1% lows were a little low, it was good enough to allow me to clear the map and take the win. In Dota 2, while neither system hit 60 FPS, it's a game where that really isn't necessary and both systems were playable. In Warframe, both systems were very smooth with good frame rates, but if we look at an older AAA title like The Witcher 3, neither system had an advantage. Both were stuck in the mid-30s. However, while the HP did have overall better performance, because it only has 8GB of RAM, which the CPU and iGPU share, some games like Doom Eternal wouldn't launch on the HP due to not enough graphics memory, while the B-Link with 16 gigs could play it, albeit at a console-like frame rate. Again, while many games are perfectly playable on either of these systems, neither are really traditional gaming PCs. They're home office or small to medium business PCs. However, my plan for this mini PC is for gaming. I plan on replacing my Raspberry Pi with the B-Link as my retro console emulator. I tested this for a few emulators and I was able to easily run some NES games like Super Mario Brothers and The Legend of Zelda. I tried several games like Mario Kart, Doom 64, Pokemon Stadium, Super Mario 64 on the Project 64 emulator. PlayStation games like Final Fantasy 7 and Resident Evil 2 worked great on RetroArch. I'll even be able to play my Nintendo Switch and Xbox 360 games on this once I dump the games to ROM, which I couldn't do on the Pi at all. Okay, last performance metrics I wanna show you is power use. Both of the systems have a relatively low power draw at idle with the HP pulling just four more watts from the wall. However, when we put both systems under full load, the difference is more significant with the HP now pulling 46 watts more than the B-Link. This calculates out to the B-Link having almost 40% better performance per watt, which depending on where you live could mean significant savings. 
The low power draw also results in cool and quiet operation. The B-Link only has one fan, which even at full load was barely audible, while the HP has three, and while none of them are overly loud, under load, they are definitely noticeable. The last thing we'll look at is the upgradability and expandability of the systems. It may seem obvious that the full-size desktop must be more expandable and upgradable, and in some ways it is. You definitely have more USB expandability, four USB 2 and four USB 3 type A ports compared to just two of each on the B-Link. In contrast, the B-Link does have a five gigabit type C port, but the HP has a built-in SD card reader. However, the B-Link has two HDMI ports capable of supporting up to two 4K 60 hertz displays, while the HP has one HDMI and one VGA output. As far as upgradability, in the B-Link, the RAM, SSD, and Wi-Fi modular are socketed and can be upgraded with maximum official support for up to 32 gigs of memory and a four terabyte SSD. And there is a cold swap 2.5 inch SSD tray in which I installed a two terabyte SSD just by sliding it in. You do have to be careful opening the B-Link as the SSD bay is attached to the main board with a small ribbon cable However, B-Link does provide a spare should you accidentally break it. The HP also has socketed and upgradable RAM, SSD, and Wi-Fi, and unlike the B-Link, the CPU is also socketed. Unfortunately, HP locks down the CPU with firmware, so it can't be upgraded unless you have an EEPROM programmer and know how to reprogram a BIOS ROM. There are also PCIe expansion slots that can hold expansion cards like capture cards, Ethernet adapters, NVMe storage, as long as they don't require supplemental power like a graphics card does because the proprietary power supply doesn't have supplemental PCIe power cables. But there are two bays for storage expansion, so you can install two and a half or three and a half inch hard drives or even a slim optical drive. So again, here it's really a wash. Both allow for the number one upgrade most people make, extra storage, while neither is capable of supporting a dedicated graphics card that will outperform the iGPUs. I think the bottom line is, at first glance, it may seem like the tiny little B-Link PC couldn't possibly hope to meet or exceed the performance of a full-size desktop PC. After all, it's not much bigger than a Raspberry Pi. However, for the specific workloads that the vast majority of average PC users do on a PC, it does meet or even exceed the performance of this. And it does it quietly, invisibly, power efficiently, and cheaply, or cheap in comparison to its full size or all-in-one portable counterparts. So if you happen to be looking for an affordable home or small office desktop PC with the performance necessary to accomplish the most common computer tasks, a mini PC may be an option to look at. For availability and current pricing of the B-Link SER5 mini PC, be sure to check the link in the description below. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments. While you're there, don't forget to click that like and maybe consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. Also, if you're looking for some good laptops, you can check out these reviews.